Thursday, January 7th, 2021, morning meditation. Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choices Teacher in Moral Theology. Act of faith in the presence of God, in nomine Patria, Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided Trinity, one God and three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, Deliver me, Jesus, that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I. <clears throat> Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the penny of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provide that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance. In this, our morning meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever virgin. Ave Maria, grazia, upon Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, nuca nehor mortis nostri. Amen. In honor of St. Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray, Gloria Patria Filio, with Spiritus Sancto, Secret Eret in Principio, Nuket Semper, and Secula Seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost, grant that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Morning Meditation, Presentation of Jesus in the Temple. Quote, He delivered himself, an oblation and a sacrifice to God. Ephesians 5, verse 2. If Jesus offers his life to his Father for love of us, it is just that we should offer him our life and our entire being. This is what he desires. And he signified to the blessed Angela de Folongino, saying to her, quote, I have offered myself for thee, in order that thou should offer thyself to me. The time having now come when, according to the law, Mary had to go to the temple for her purification and to present to Jesus, to the Divine Father, present Jesus to the Divine Father. Behold, she sets out in the company with Joseph. Joseph carries the two turtle doves they are to offer to God. And Mary carries her dear infant. She takes the Lamb of God to offer him to the Almighty in token of the great sacrifice that this son would one day accomplish on the cross. Consider the Holy Virgin entering the temple. She makes an oblation of her son on behalf of the whole human race and says, Behold, O Eternal Father, thy beloved only begotten one, who is thy son and mine also. I offer him to thee as a victim to thy divine justice in order to appease thy wrath against sinners. Accept him, O God of mercy, 
Have pity on our miseries, and for the love of this immaculate Lamb, do thou receive men into thy grace. Eternal Father, I, a miserable sinner, who have deserved a thousand hells, present myself this day before thee, O God of infinite majesty, and I offer thee my poor heart. But, O God, what a heart I offer thee, a heart that has never known how to love thee, but has, on the contrary, so often offended thee, and so often betrayed thee. But now I offer to thee, full of penitence and resolve to love thee at all costs and to obey thee in all things. Pardon me and draw me entirely to thy love. I do not deserve to be heard, but thy infant son who offers himself to thee in the temple as a sacrifice for my salvation merits for me this grace. I offer thee this thy son and his sacrifice, and in this place all my hope and in this I place all my hopes. The offering of Mary is joined to that of Jesus. Behold me, says the holy infant, behold me, O my Father, to thee do I consecrate my whole life. Thou hast sent me into the world to save it by my blood. Behold my blood and my whole self. I offer myself entirely to thee for the salvation of the world. Quote, he delivered himself an oblation and a sacrifice to God. Unquote. No sacrifice was ever so acceptable to God as this which his dear son then made, who had become, even from his infancy, a victim and priest. If all men and angels had offered their lives, their oblation would not have been so pleasing to God as this of Jesus Christ, because in this offering alone the Eternal Father received infinite honor and infinite satisfaction. I thank thee, O my Father, for having sent thy Son upon the earth to sacrifice himself for me. And I bless thee, O incarnate word, Lamb of God, who didst offer thyself to die for my soul. I love thee, my dear Redeemer, and thee alone will I love, for I find none but thee who has offered and sacrificed his life to save me. It, takes, it makes me shed tears to think how ungrateful I have been to thee, but thou willest not my death, but that I should be converted and live. Yes, my Jesus, I turn to thee, and I repent with my whole heart of having offended thee, of having offended the great God, who has sacrificed himself for me. Do thou give me life, and life shall then be spent in loving thee, the sovereign good. Make me love thee, I ask for nothing more. Mary, my mother, thou didst offer thy son in the temple even for me. Do thou offer him again for me, and beseech the eternal Father to accept me for his own, for the love of Jesus. And thou, my queen, do thou also accept me for thy faithful servant. If I am thy servant, I shall also be the servant of thy son. Spiritual reading, St. Simeon's Prophecy. In this valley of tears, every man is born to weep, and all must suffer by enduring the evils which are of daily occurrence. But how much greater would the misery of life be did we also know the future evils which await us? Quote, unfortunate indeed would be his would his lot be, says Seneca, who, knowing the future, would have to suffer all by anticipation. Unquote. The Lord shows us this mercy. He conceals the trials that await us, that, whenever they may be, we may endure them but once. He did not show Mary this compassion, for she, whom God willed to be the queen of sorrows, and in all things like his son, had always before her eyes and continually <laughs> suffered all the torments that awaited her. And these were the sufferings of the passion and death of her beloved Jesus. For in the temple, St. Simeon, having received the divine child into his arms, foretold to her son that her son would be a mark for all the persecutions and opposition of men. Quote, Behold, this child is set for a sign which shall be contradicted. Unquote. And therefore, that a sword of sorrow should pierce her soul, quote, and thy own soul a sword shall pierce. Luke 2, 34 and 35. The Blessed Virgin herself told St. Matilda that on this announcement of St. Simeon, quote, all her joy was changed into sorrow, unquote. For as it was revealed to St. Teresa, though the Blessed Mother already knew that the life of her son would be sacrificed for the salvation of the world, yet she then learnt more distinctly and in greater detail the sufferings and cruel death that awaited her poor son. She knew he would be contradicted and contradicted in everything, contradicted in his doctrines. For instead of being believed, he would be esteemed a blasphemer for teaching that he was the Son of God. 
This he was declared to be by the impious Caiaphas, saying, quote, He has blasphemed, he is guilty of death. Matthew 26, 65. He was wisdom itself and was treated as ignorant. Quote, How did this man know letters, having never learned? John 7, verse 15. As a false prophet, Quote, and they blindfolded him and smote his face, saying, Prophesy, who is that that struck thee? Luke 22, verse 64. He was treated as a madman. Quote, he is mad, why you hear him? John 10, verse 20. As a drunkard, a glutton, and a friend of sinners. Quote, Behold, the man that is a glutton and a drinker of wine, a friend of publicans and sinners. Luke 7, verse 34. As a sorcerer, quote, By the prince of devils he casteth out devils. Matthew 9, 34. As a heretic and a possessed by evil spirits, quote, Do we not say well of thee that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? John 8, 48. In a word, Jesus was considered so notoriously wicked that, as the Jews said to Pilate, no trial was necessary to condemn him. Quote, if he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up to thee. John 18, verse 30. He was contradicted in his very soul, for even his eternal father, to give place to divine justice, contradicted him by refusing to hear his prayer when he said, Father, if it be possible, let this chalice pass from me. Matthew 26, verse 39. And abandoned him to fear, weariness, and sadness, so that our afflicted Lord exclaimed, quote, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. Matthew 26, verse 38. And his interior sufferings even caused him to sweat blood, contradicted and persecuted and fined in all his body and all throughout his life, for he was tortured in all his sacred members, in his hands, his feet, his face, his head, and his whole body, so that drained of his blood and an object of scorn, he died of torments on an ignominious cross. When David, in the midst of all his pleasures and regal grandeur, heard from the prophet Nathan that his son should die, Quote, the child that is born to thee shall surely die. 2 Kings 12, 14. He could find no peace, but wept, fasted, and slept on the ground. Mary, with the greatest calmness, received the announcement that her son should die and always peaceably submitted to it. But what grief must she continually have suffered, seeing this amiable son always near her, hearing from him words of eternal life, and witnessing his holy demeanor, Abraham suffered much during the three days he passed with his beloved Isaac, after knowing that he was to lose him. O oh God, not for three days, but for three and thirty years, had Mary to endure a like sorrow. But do I say a like sorrow? It was as much greater, as the son of Mary was more lovely than the son of Abraham. Concluding prayer, I give you thanks, O oh God, for the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which shall now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O triune God, keep my resolutions and keep them well. For the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay, that thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I have been even until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance and thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. Nomina Patri, Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.